All right, hi. Can, I don't think it's working. I'll just talk really loud. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Can you hear me? There we go. That's good. Um, hi. Uh, my talk is going to be on uh, finite state automata. And the, the idea, the reason I want to give this talk is because. What? Yeah, this is working. The reason I want to give this talk is because we've had a lot of performance improvements using this technology in Lucene, and it's not percentages, but usually times, times n, you know, 50 times faster or 50 times less memory. So I think um, we have some good software that you can use if you want to solve a similar problems, and so um, hopefully you'll, you'll look into it. So this is uh, kind of what I will do really quick in this compressed talk. I will do who am I, kind of an overview of what this stuff is, what we've done in Lucene, our actual implementations, and then try to go through some uh, example applications. So uh, my name is Robert again. I, I work on Lucene and Solar. I'm a committer and PMC member. I work for Lucid Imagination. Uh, my background is kind of internationalization, so I've worked with uh, finite state for natural language processing and things like that. And so I think it's fun integrating it with search. So um, first we have kind of the automaton. And you can think of this like a set, a set of strings. And this one, we, we have stuff like mop and pop and stop. And basically, it's like a graph where the nodes are shared if they're common in the set. So it's, it's pretty simple. But you, know, you can combine these things. And, and you kind of see the compression here, you know, like top and pop. They, they share uh, some of the same nodes. So um, you can kind of get the idea where uh, you, know, you, you have some compression of RAM. The transducer is more like a map. So whereas instead of a set, we have uh, a value we can associate with each key. So in this case, uh, we, we added some numbers for each of these, each of these words. And uh, the, the values are, are also shared in the sense that in this case, as you traverse, you add the numbers together, and you get the results. So if you look at something like um, stop, then the way you do it is when you traverse, you get 3 plus 2, and you get 5. So in Lucene, we have uh, kind of three implementations that I'm going to talk about. And what we have is the FSA, the set. And then we have the FST, the map. And then we have our analysis API, which is actually uh, another FSA. So it's another set. So um, the FSA, we actually use an existing package here. And we've made some improvements and submitted them back to them. And there's some back and forth. But uh, this is um, yeah, it's a pretty simple uh, API. You can use objects. You can build you know, automata. You, you wouldn't want to build something huge with this. So this is something we use for you know, regular expressions and things like that that are typically small, not something like um, auto-suggest dictionary or something huge because it's not as efficient. But yeah, it's pretty nice if you want to do you know, regular expressions or something like that. It's, it's much better than, say, using JDK. For our FST, this is kind of uh, used for a completely different purpose. So this is the, the map again. And so in this case, we use it like in our um, index file formats and something like huge dictionaries, auto-suggest. And so in this case, we're, we want it to be very efficient. And the second bullet is really the most important, that once you build this thing, it's one byte array. And that's, that's kind of uh, the best part about it. So you don't have objects being created and destroyed. You just have big byte array. Uh, there's some interesting properties here. Um, there, there's a link you can go to. When we'll put the slides up, and you can find out more information. But you know, one cool thing is about this map is you can actually sometimes retrieve by value. So um, go backwards, right? You can say, here's a value. Give me the key. So there's a downside, OK, that um, the APIs are not necessarily uh, easy to use. We'll, we'll admit that, but because there's a trade-off for performance sometimes, and in this case, we, we went for performance. So, but we're trying to improve this. And of course, anyone can. It's open source, so it can help us improve the APIs and make them more usable. <laughs> and finally, if you've used uh, Lucene's analyzers, the analysis API, this is actually um, a funny state machine, too. And it, it, these are some simple examples with like synonyms. You know, quick and fast are a synonym. So, this is kind of what your analysis chain looks like. 
And we've extended it recently so that uh, you can actually have kind of, um, in this case, wireless network and hotspot are synonyms. And so we have the ability to say that hotspot spans two different terms. So that's, that's fairly new. And um, there's, there's some important use cases for that. So now the interesting part, you know, what is the real world applications? Like what are we doing with this stuff? Why does it matter? Uh, the first thing we do is we implemented a lot of queries as FSAs. And these uh, are things like regular expressions and wildcards and um, fuzzy query. And there's other possible uses you can do, but uh, historically these were really slow in Lucene. They're not necessarily fast, but they're a lot faster than they were before. So, uh, and it's also simpler because we have the, the same execution path for, say, a wildcard and a regular expression, because you think you know, they're, they're basically the same thing. A wildcard is just a more limited form. Uh, one interesting thing is now we can spell check directly from the index because we have this, this faster uh, automata. So this is nice. Uh, before in Lucene and Solar, you would have to have an additional index for spell checking, which is really annoying because uh, who wants to have this secondary index being kept in sync with the main one? And so now you, you don't need this sidecar index at all, and you can just uh, basically check straight from the index. In order to do that, we had to uh, you know, do a lot of crazy work for um, implementing these algorithms. And this, this quote here is uh, from one of the contributors helping us, and he, he gave me this exact time frame. In three weeks, I'm going to be done with this. It was like a 60-page paper, but, and he did it. So it works well. Uh, Japanese, this is another cool use case where we have, um, you know, it, it, it's a difficult language to, do, to analyze, and there's a lot of data. And the data was pretty large. So by using FST, we, we have 12, 12 times less memory. So that's, that's pretty useful. Um, if you want to know more about Japanese, there's, there's a lot of stu interesting stuff here. Christian's giving a talk about, at about three, I think. So I encourage you to go, um, go to his talk. It's, it's cool from, even if it's you know, maybe applicable to other languages, but uh, I think it's, it's a really cool capability. Auto-suggest, I think, um, you know, this is uh, one of my favorite use cases here. So in this case, we actually use uh, weights so it's a weighted FST. So the output is actually some idea of the weight. You know, um, imagine you have your query logs or whatever, and, and, you, and you want to weight them. And the cool thing about the weights is, the, in this case, the weights are pushed into the uh, automaton such that you have um, the minimal weight for the rest of the subgraph. So basically what we do is, if you type in WEA, the blue part here, we traverse the inputs, and then we start traversing the outputs and find the top end. And we can do this efficiently because of the way the FST pushes weight. So weighted FST is, is interesting, and our FST supports it. So basically, a weight is just another output for us. And um, this quote is, is from David. When, when I first came up with this idea, he said, this is what he said, I, I really don't think this can work. I, I don't have a counterexample. But um, then actually, I think uh, a couple hours later, he was posting patches th that made this work. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, synonyms, again, I, I had a simpler uh, example before, but uh, previously we did not use FST for synonyms, you know, and so if you have a big synonym dictionary, for some reason a lot of people do this. They have huge synonym dictionaries, and it was using, you know, monstrous amounts of memory because you have things like hash maps and whatnot that you would typically use in Java. You know, it's just creating tons of objects. It's just, you know, massive amount of overhead if you even had, like, you know, maybe a million synonyms. So we... Um, kind of rewrote it to use an FST. And, and these are the kind of the typical thing I, I see when we uh, port code like this to use an FST. You know, we have a much faster construction and uh, 59 times less RAM than before. So this is a pretty big improvement if, uh, if you use a lot of synonyms at all. Then you, you know, I think you'll be happy. I think as soon as 3.4 in Lucene, we have this. And so uh, you should upgrade if you're using an older version. Oh, this is our term dictionary. There's another place we use FSTs. Um, in this case, we have a new one called Block Tree coming in 4.0. And this is an example benchmark of the kind of improvements we see. In this case, it's queries per second for spell correction. So we, we previously had 20 queries per second. And with a newer FST implementation, uh, it's almost you know, two and a half times the uh, query volume here. So 50 queries per second. This is on Wikipedia, all of Wikipedia, so Wikipedia English. And these links, these benchmarks are actually generated uh, every night. 
on this, you know, Mike McCandless does it on his machine. And so you can actually watch uh, the graphs of Lucene's uh, performance over time as we make changes to it. And you can see historically, there's these different bullets, these letters that you see here. He's annotated these with what changes caused uh, these changes in performance. So uh, yeah, if you want, you know, look at the link when you get the slides and you can dig into all these performance numbers. And this is, by the way, as all these graphs are single thread. So we do queries per second with, um, it's per thread. So if you have more cores, then it will be even faster. And this is just an example to show how we got this performance improvement. Basically, um, before in Lucene, the, the term dictionary, the term index, the way it would go to find a term is that we had um, basically ranges of terms, and you would find a range, and then you would go to disk. Instead, we don't st store ranges of terms, we, we have prefixes of terms. And this is interesting, too, because it means uh, now we don't have to go to disk always to determine if a term, say, doesn't exist at all. So that can be pretty interesting for, like, primary key lookup speed, something like that, because before, in previous versions of Lucene, to look up a term, you always had to seek. And so now, sometimes you don't have to seek. Uh, here's, another, here's another improvement. It's uh, basically, in this case, we say, well, we'll put the entire inverted index in an FST and just see how that looks. And um, yeah, I mean, here's, here's an example for primary key performance. I think, uh, again, like two and a half times as fast. So um, this could be, you can actually use this. You can select this in Lucene 4. You can say, I have, you know, an ID field or something, and it, it doesn't have, you know, huge documents or anything in this field. It's just, you know, an ID, and I need it to be very fast. I need to do lookups on it. Uh, this can be a useful um, postings format to select. You can, Lucene has uh, flexible indexing, so you can choose uh, which uh, format you want per field. Yeah, again, as I mentioned, uh, since you have this pluggable per field, this um, postings format would be uh, maybe ideal if you have the RAM. There's other ones like uh, pulsing that could be more useful if you can't afford the memory for this. But um, you, you, you get the best performance for an ID field. And there, here's a link for more information on this uh, specific codec. So finally, to conclude before questions, uh, we have, I think, um, a lot of good use cases in Lucene. We have more in the future coming where we'll be able to use finite state to make pretty big changes in performance. Um, but hopefully also, if you're even not doing search, maybe you could look at Lucene's implementation and it might be useful for you if you have these kind of problems. So, okay, I'm ready for questions. So thanks for what? Thanks for what? Are there any questions? Okay. Um, if you look at the term dictionary case, um, I think uh, by using the finite state uh, technology, you will get a considerable reduction in space required. So isn't it possible now to have this, the whole term dictionary of Lucene in memory? Yes, we, we actually have an issue for this because if you use this, this memory postings format I spoke of, it also puts the postings in RAM, which is probably not that good. But um, there's actually an issue open to just have a fully RAM resident uh, term dictionary. And you're right. I mean, you can read it as a byte array, so it, it'd probably be quick. And yeah, but it's, it's a memory trade-off. If you have, say, millions of terms, it would still be you know, a few megabytes. But yeah, I, I think we should at least have the option. So there's, definitely, there's a Jira issue open in Apache for this. OK, thanks. Um, uh, you, you told us that uh, you have uh, the, these weighted uh, finite state automata, uh, which are uh, sort of, as I understood it, uh, emulated by uh, having a finite state uh, transducer where uh, the output is used uh, as, a, as a weight. Right. Is that right? So, so there's no uh, possibility to use weighted finite state uh, uh, transducers. Right, I mean, this, this is exactly what I'm saying. We can use uh, Lucene's FST as a weighted FST. It's, it's basically, um, you can plug in the, the algebra you want. So um, by default, like the, the algebra that's usually used is the um, min plus algebra. So this is, uh, that, that was in the example I gave for suggest. 
So that means that the, the node keeps the, the minimum of the subgraph, and you use plus operator as you go along to sum up. But yeah, you could probably use, um, you can define your own outputs. So if you want to do something like uh, Viterbi or probabilistic, you know, use other semi-rings, you can do this. And it should all work. Okay. Right? <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. So that's well. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>